Welcome back, everybody, to Friday's edition of Behind the Grind. Today we have special guest star. I may butcher his name, but it is Georgie Karakanyan joining us for the first time. Just picked up his uh, his Bellator win not too long ago. Joining us now, Georgie Karakanyan. How you doing, brother? Mr. Simon Georgie, how are you today, right? my friend? <laughs> yes, sir. Good, 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 brother. It was a little easier to pronounce mine, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, how are you doing? Uh, we had some technical difficulties. We, yeah, we have yeah. you here now, so we got to appreciate it. Tell us, how are you doing today, my friends? I'm doing good, bro. Just the sun's shining, so I'm feeling great. Yes, yeah, so you can't complain. So you got this win not long ago. How how were you celebrating that win over the tough and durable Bryce Logan? It was a close one, closer than 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 I expected, really, in my opinion. So how did you celebrate that that win? Uh just I have so many fights, so it, it wasn't it wasn't any different than other fights. Uh, just uh, I wasn't happy with my performance, but you know I'm I'm glad I got the the victory. But uh, yeah didn't celebrate much there's nothing to do there so we just went straight back to the hotel room and just packed to leave the next day yeah so i believe it was your third fight in 2020 how how was the bubble life over there was it a little little or the third time talk to me first of all the third <laughs> time around so you, you have your third experience talk to me a little bit how how was that experience for you it was uh this last one was kind of getting uh getting uh too much it was just it almost feels like you're in a prison man uh <laughs> but the f first one was good first one i was in ireland so it, nothing was going on with the world no COVID, no nothing so when we got back that's when it all hit it but with the uh the first first one was against miles jury uh, when i fought there it was just uh it was kind of weird to get used to that the fight five weeks we usually fighters would go uh go to the city just try to look around and just be out there but this time man it was different you just you check in uh you take the test you're in your room for 24 hours maybe a little bit longer <laughs> uh <laughs> you're waiting for a text message from them see if you uh positive or negative so uh it's uh i feel like before when you already check in you're already getting ready for a fight but this time around you don't know yet until the day of the fight if you fight it you know because some yeah, guys yeah. got sent home they got tested positive, so it's a toss-up. But I mean, uh, you know, I try to take as many books as I can with me to read, and then just just to be busy. All we're doing is training. Yeah, what kind of books were you reading down your time over there? Uh, this time I was reading that uh, the new Wim Hof book. It's a pretty good one. That one okay. is pretty good, and then James Nestor book called Breathe. So just try to re read as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta talk to me. Obviously, you're a professional. You have over 40 fights now, but this this is a little different. It's it's hard for a lot of people to adjust to. I don't know how difficult it is for you, but you gotta talk to me. Does that like not really affect your performance? But that, does that play a toll on how you actually compete as far as cutting weight and everything associated with the actual fight? Uh, I think this time around, just not having a crowd. You know, I feel like uh, it affects every uh, fighter differently. If you have a fighter that's, uh, I guess that's doing good in a gym, but doesn't perform under lights, this is a perfect time for them to kind of get used to it. But to me, man, I have so many fights. I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I, uh, I adjust pretty good. Uh, the only adjustment I had to make is just getting used to all the testing and just getting ready for a fight, stuff like that. But other than that, I don't care. If I mean, I love when there's a crowd because when you. When you hit someone, they go crazy. So uh, <laughs> this time it's just uh, you could hear the commentators talking, and you at first you're like, the f I mean, like that the fight with Miles, it was just hard to register. But then I was like, oh shit, it just no one is here. That's why we could mm -hmm. hear everyone. So, but other than that, I just adjust to everything. All you hear from the corner is like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. The, the <laughs> yeah, well, you can't even hear anything because they're wearing oh, a so mask. You, so it sounds oh, like that's this. right. Yeah. So it's like someone's <laughs> mumbling, so it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can only imagine. But you, you keep mentioning my friend Miles Jury. I want to know, you, you said you're 3-0 in 2020, but you got to talk to me. That that one did not end up in your favor. It was a split decision loss. So talk to me. How, why or how do you consider yourself 3-0 in 2020? 
I think I, that that fight was mine. I mean, I I won that fight. I was press pressuring the whole uh, three rounds. I gave him the third round, fair and square. He won that that round, but the first two is mine. Uh, I mean, I was pressuring. I was trying to finish him, and then top that off. I mean, I, I I'm really not happy with the judges at the Mohegan Sun. There's there's few judges there that are just just destroying everyone's career with you know, with their decisions, but you can always leave it to the judges' hands. That's the that's the one thing, you know, with fighting, it's it's in your hands. You have 15 minutes to finish the guy in front of you. And, um, I mean, I said this in several interviews, not just me felt that I won. I got a text message from Scott Coker right away, said, hey, I, uh, you won that fight. There's other people like Mike Hogan, uh, Rich Chow. So, uh, uh, to me, I'm just happy. I, I got to get to fight one more time. Uh, I don't know yet. I might fight one more time this year. So if, if it happens, it'll be a good one. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta talk to me. You, you mentioned the judges in the the post fight press conference. In my opinion, isn't that a little embarrassing to see that these guys they go to school and they they, they have a career in this stuff? So why can they not see what other people are seeing? <sighs> I <laughs> I wish I could fire some of those judges, but uh, it's not my call. But like, mm. yeah, you know, they, uh, I don't know, maybe this, this, this whole, uh, 2020 got in their head. They're just eating too much because <laughs> every, every time I step in the cage, I, uh, I try to make eye contact with the judges. And to me, if you, uh, if you're overweight and have a belly, uh, your mind is not thinking straight. So, uh, that, that, that's how I look at things. And, uh, yeah, when I see uh, overweight uh, judges, I better finish the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Does that does that happen often? Do you see them a lot when you're fighting, or what's going on there? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I pay attention to that. I'm like, fuck, you better not go to judges, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and it's Jesus. something needs to be done. Like, I don't know if uh, ex pro fighters could become judges and uh, exactly. Yeah. I I think that'll help the sport a lot, man. But you know, big John McCarthy knows a lot, so. Maybe he'll change a lot of stuff. For sure, I've I've talked about in interviews before these these ex uh, ex fighters or even current fighters. I'm not sure, but they they would make the perfect position because they've been in those positions. They know what, what's going on exactly, and they really understand. Because you look at Herb Dean, for example, he was a former fighter. He knows yep. what's he he still trains currently, I believe. So why why can't they hire people like that? Yeah, I mean him, uh, just Jason Herzog. He's a, he's a pretty good mm -hmm. referee. I mean, Big John doesn't ref no more, but those two are. Jason is pretty good. He trains too, so I think they could do a lot of changes. They should. They should do something. Yeah, yeah. So this this one again was a split decision, which I don't, <laughs> I'm not kissing kissing your butt or anything, but I believe that was a, a unanimous, fair and square. Yeah, yeah. So talk to me. <laughs> when you when they say uh, 29, 28, Bar slogan, 29, 28, like that, <laughs> are are you surprised? How surprised are you? After that, I was really surprised. I mean, I, I raised my hand right away. And uh, and uh, when, when you're in a fight, especially I have so many fights, you could feel like if, even like even Bryce, uh, I could feel that, you know, he, he felt that he lost. It's not about feeling he lost, but I was just like when they say they said his name first. I was like, what the I thought we we're going back <laughs> into that freaking miles fight. I was like, oh, no. So. uh. Yeah, it was pretty. I was pretty nervous, but I I knew right away that I won. So I was like, man, I don't care if, if it's a split. I know I won for sure. So, uh, yeah, just uh, and the looking back, going back to my Miles fight, that same judge was there. Too. Oh so no I was way! Like, Fuck. <laughs> so <laughs> I was it? like, shit. Is it the same guy with the big belly? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, boy, there's one guy with. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to have a talk with him. We're gonna have to <laughs> sit him down. <laughs> oh. All right, but at least we were lucky. We got the win, which I believe you were, you well deserved that win. But talk to me. You you say you're three and zero at lightweight. Uh, speaking, what like is the, is the future with Bellator in the lightweight or the featherweight division? Oh, in the lightweight, Fe featherweight. Uh, as you can see, my head is freaking big. I would cut a lot of weight. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, light, lightweight, I feel really good. Uh, there's a lot of good matchups there, and I feel like I uh, – it's just me fighting there. I'm not in there three weeks before a fight thinking about cutting weight and all that bullshit. So I'm just focused on fighting and 
I, I'm looking at this uh, longevity, so uh, I think not cutting weight is good for me. I naturally walk around 170, 175, so uh, cutting down to 45 was a lot for me. So uh, making a change to uh, lightweight is, is, is pretty good, uh, and I feel like I could fight here for a long time. You know, I look at the guys like uh, Yoel Romero, and a lot of those guys are just you know on their peak career. Even a Texera, he just he looked great his last performance. You know. 41 was, years old yeah i was picking Crazy. him i was like nah he's gonna lose but he choked what's the name santos out so i was like yeah. shit you know props to those guys and uh you know i just uh yeah i think 55 is where i'm gonna stay and i'm gonna uh finish my fighting career at this weight yeah i'm, I'm not related to you romero in case you were wondering just kind of make no. sure <laughs> no 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 <laughs> maybe i i'll say maybe i am i don't know <laughs> you don't like his style I no, I said maybe maybe I'm related to him. Oh, maybe. you are. Oh shit! I just see it. Oh shit! You got it. Like yeah, yeah. Maybe if he if he seems I'm a, I love him. <laughs> I'll see you soon, boy. <laughs> uh, He's crazy. Uh, I don't know, crazy, crazy guy. So, like back if we're still talking about featherweight, which I know you're you're not going back there, but. Our, our, you, you saw Emmanuel Sanchez fight uh, last night, correct? Tell me about how you saw his performance one last night. Oh, he looked great, man. Uh, with him, he, he sets a pace where you cannot let him get too comfortable. And he just put it on uh, Vichel. And Vichel, he reminded me of a uh, uh, dude. He was surviving there because those body punches, uh, they, were, they would probably stop a lot of fighters. And he just kept going, kept going. And, uh, you know, Sanchez got in his groove. And he just start going from there. It just uh, you cannot let him get on his third gear because he's uh, he just goes, you know. It, he just in a flow state. He's just going, attacking you. I think he looked great, and uh, I can't wait for that fight against uh, Pitbull. But man, Pitbull look freaking great against Pedro, and mm. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, I mean, all of us we get at a certain point in your career, you get delusional and you think you're the best. <laughs> And I know Pedro had, had really high hopes, but I think me being in Bellator for a really long time, I knew what was coming. So it just Pitbull's hands are very, very heavy, man. And, uh, you know, it just uh, hopefully bounces back and comes back uh, fighting, you know. Mm -hmm. do, do any of those former opponents, because you've you faced like almost all these guys that are fighting this this Grand Prix, do any of those fighters that you fought previously intrigue you to fighting them one day once again? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I would. Uh, I would like to fight Pitbull. I would like to fight Vichel. Uh, I know he fought at uh, 55 once. Uh, I would like to fight him because uh, that fight that I fought him in 2015 it was like five months after my ACL surgery. So I would like to get that fight. But uh, Sanchez too. But I'm not going down to 45. That's for sure. So I'll stay at 55. If they want to come back up, I'll be here. Well, we got we got uh, the the champ who won last night. He's the current fifty five pound champ. So maybe one day we keep winning. And we'll, we'll see him once again. Yeah, yeah, but just uh, I know he's in a featherweight tournament, so he's kind of holding up that fifty five division. And uh, you know, I was trying to I'm trying to see if I could get a fight with his brother Patricky. Uh, okay. So uh, hopefully that'll happen. And uh, I I've been hearing that he's trying to hand him the belt. Or, but I don't think so. I think he's going to try to fight. So, uh, man, uh, I was supposed to fight Patricio back then. And hopefully that fight happens, you know, one day. That, that fight uh, with Patricio who won last night actually happened in 2011. So think about it. How, how, <laughs> how long you've evolved since 2011. It's just crazy to think about. Yeah, yeah. It's, I remember he was coming up. We were both in a tournament. Uh, <laughs> And he's just, we were like, we didn't know nothing about him. And then when I was, when I was fighting him, I was like, man, this, because he hit me a few times. And I was like, after first round, I was like, oh, this motherfucker hits hard. <laughs> and, then, and then third round, my coach is like, you know, I think we lost all three rounds. So you got to do something. So I just play the Russian roulette with the guy that's really good with the left hooks. And just hit me the left hook. I thought I was in fucking Disneyland. I opened my eyes. Like, Wait, what's going on? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> He threw a couple of those uh, last night too, which which actually set up the right hand. It's pretty nasty. Yeah, his his uh, uh his left hook, his left hook to straight right is is like his money shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I want to learn a little bit. If we're we're 
off about MMA right now. I want to learn a little bit about your background. So I'm pretty sure you were born in, in somewhere in Russia, and then you have um, some Turkish, like, all over the place. So talk to me. W- what is your background, I guess? I was like, <laughs> no, Turkish. A off. <laughs> no Turkish? <laughs> it was just a wild guess. I no, no, no. No, I, I was, yeah, I was, I'm from uh, Moscow, Russia, but uh, uh, my dad is Armenian, my mom is Russian, so, uh, you know, I was born, raised in Moscow most of my times. Um, I started playing uh, a soccer. I mean, I did karate okay. for a little bit, then I did soccer uh, for good about 13 years. I moved to the States. Uh, I played here. Uh, try to, uh, I mean, I played pro, but my pro was just to make it to Barcelona, Real Madrid, those two teams. So uh, I played for a national team. I, uh, I played indoor soccer. And then uh, <clears throat> when I went to Mexico to try out for this team, Morelia Monarcas, I, uh, I was going to get signed, but my dad was upset that I wasn't done with the high school, so I had to come oh, back man. to the high school, <laughs> which was a good decision. <laughs> for sure, yeah. And, and then, you know, after that, I didn't want to play soccer, so I just started doing uh, jiu-jitsu. Okay. And then got into fighting. Yeah. So if you had to pick, if you were, they both offered you multi-million dollar contracts, Barcelona or Real Madrid, who were you picking? <laughs> Barca. Barca, for sure. Really? Right. Yeah. Numero uno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the first right. pick. So we got to do this this commercial. Everyone's favorite. Sheath underwear, the most comfortable undies on planet Earth. Use code GRIND20 for 20% off on your next purchase. Everyone's favorite. We did those commercials. Okay, but I have a question for you, my friends. If you have the option, again, are you, are you going to be... A, a human okay so you can either have a human body and a dog head or a human head and a dog body what are you picking and why are you picking that choice oh shit <laughs> you, you gotta think a lot here this is very important <laughs> human That's head dog one. body dog body human head uh, I think I would go with the dog body human uh no, uh, dog head with the human body, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that one. <laughs> okay. Why are you picking that one? How do you know the dog can talk? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just bark. I'll just oh, bark. That's all I'll do, man. <laughs> okay. You communicate with the other dogs? <laughs> yep, yep. It'll be, it'll throw them off. I think it'll throw yeah. most humans off with the dog head, but, uh. Maybe. But depends what kind of dog head, like, uh. Maybe I'll oh. go with the German Shepherd. <laughs> German Shepherd? That's very At least it'd be, you'd be a little scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah. <laughs> first of all, I want to thank you for joining. I know you had a busy day ahead of you. You have a lot of catching up to do. Um, so like I said, I want to thank you. If you have any shout-outs, uh, the floor is all yours. Go for it. No, man, just thank you for having me. And uh, if you see Yoel Romero, just tell him I love him and Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hello, you boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, All right. Man. So, Thank like you, I brother. said, I appreciate the time. Best of luck in those future endeavors, and hopefully, we'll be seeing you back on that Bellator stage very soon. Thank you, Simon. I appreciate it. All right. It. You take care. You. Love you. Let's take care. <laughs> All right. So there he was, Georgie Kalahanyan. All right, so everyone's favorite time, we have the fighter of the week, the the behind-the-grind fighter of the week. So this week, he comes from one championship, John Hands of Stone Lineker. Switching it up, our first one. Last week, Corey Anderson. This week, John Lineker fought earlier today. Uh, Second round TKO over the number one contender. In my opinion, I believe he should be fighting for that title next. He's number five, just beat number one in the one championship uh, division. Uh, I believe, like I said, he should be fighting for that title. He's a well-known guy. Uh, I believe he's the perfect guy. Very humble to rep the one championship banner. 
So John Hands of Stone Lineker with a TKO win in round two gets the 50 BTGs, baby. We'll be seeing you next Friday right here at 4 o'clock on Behind the Grind. Stay tuned um, at every video. At the end, we do announce the BTG Fighter of the Week, so stay tuned and enjoy the fights tomorrow for UFC Felder Vote versus Dos Anjos.